This is the OTB Network. everyone and welcome to Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We have a lot of exciting racing action to bring to you from around the country and around the world with some international events for you as well. Uh, we are got only a couple of weeks left, five weeks exactly, till the Breeders' Cup from this past weekend. So uh, we've got a lot of horses making their final preparations, making uh, people making decisions where they're going to be sending some of their top horses for the next couple of weeks in terms of final preps for the Breeders' Cup series to be run down at Gulfstream Park in the beginning of November. Today we're going to start off the program down at Calder Racecourse. We often start down, uh, down in Florida, this time with the Miami Breeders' Cup Handicap run on Saturday. This is a one-mile event on the turf with a $300,000 purse. It's for three-year-olds and up. Let's head down to Calder now for the call of the Miami Breeders' Cup Handicap. And they're off in the Miami Mile Breeders' Cup Handicap. It's an even start to the inside. That's Reality Road, middle of the course. That's Wirtz rushing up. Between horses, it's Shamrock City. Two lanes back to the outside. That's Tekken. Then between horses comes Sharp Appeal. Moving at the rail, at the hedge, that's Alligator Bay. Then it's two lanes back to the outside. It's Unite's Big Red. Between horses, Born Mighty. And on the inside, it's Harahi. They move around the clubhouse turn the first quarter in 23 and 1. The speed duel develops. Shamrock City on the inside. Wirtz on the outside. Their heads apart. Then it's three lanes back to the hedge. That's Reality Road on the outside. It's Tech in a closer fourth. Then it's a length and a half back to the outside. That's Spendable. Inside of him comes Alligator Bay. Length to the hedge. It's Sharp Appeal. And two lengths back to Harai. Between horses born mighty. And on the far outside unites Big Red. The half and 46 and 2, and they move to the far turn. On the outside, Wirtz has a short lead with Shamrock City right at their hedge. A length back to the outside, it's Tekken. Then a half length back to the hedge, looking for room, Reality Road. Moving up next, that sharp appeal to the outside, it's Spendable. Further out come Unite Big Red. They went three quarters and won 10 and 2, and they're at the top of the stretch. On the inside, Shamrock City on the outside, moving up to challenge its sharp appeal. Length and a half back down the middle of the course, the stable made. Uh, Harahi. They're in the final furlong now. The entry of Sharp Appeals in front. Harai's coming on and between them at Shamrock City. Here's the wire. Sharp Appeal takes the Miami Mile Breeders' Cup handicap. Sharp Appeal getting the win here. This is a horse that had come back from the really having been uh, been considered through with his stakes career had some problems with arthritis was uh, had some rather experimental surgery performed on uh, on his hind legs getting the win here as uh, as a very very impressive one and three quarter length win from well off the pace splitting rivals in the far turn taking over and drawing away under Javier Castellano Shamrock City the uh, early pace setter was pressed hard uh, lost the lead to Wirtz earlier on uh, held on for the second spot. Hurahi, the entry mate of Sharp Appeal, who uh, probably was the portion of the entry that was taking more of the money, getting up for the second sp or the third spot here. Underwriter Ibar Koa. The winner, Sharp Appeal, is a six-year-old bay horse. He is, was bred in Florida, sired by World Appeal. He's owned by Martin, Cher um, Martin Cherry, trained by Marty Wolfson, ridden to victory by Javier Cavo. Castellano completing the one mile distance in one minute 35 and three fifth seconds. Next, we're going to head to Colonial Downs, where the featured race on Saturday was the Virginia Derby. This is a $200,000 added event for three year olds going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. Let's head to Colonial Downs now for the call of the Virginia Derby. And they're off in the Virginia Derby. Appear to be a clean start there. The gray press type comes out running in first with northeast bound in the second spot. Hold it, hold it, hold it, eager to go on. On the inside, Passanetti going to be reserved. Passanetti now takes second on the inside right there is northeast bound. Northeast bound tugs along second. Passanetti wrangled back in third. Appalachian Chief running in fourth, followed by the Night Skies racing in fifth. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hunter's aim is next. Imaginary Sword is floating out there. Three wide into the first turn. It's a break of two. Special Dancer. Five Beta Dock is racing on the inside of that one. About six lengths 
drinks off the lead, the highest bidder, followed by American Falcon, who has one horse beaten. That is Middleworth Bay, who trails the field about 14 lengths, covers the group in the Virginia Derby as they move around at first turn. Northeast bound out there, leading it by a neck. They're not going too fast up front. As a matter of fact, they're slowing it down right up here. It's northeast bound, leading it by a neck. Press type is second. The night sky up close to the pace in third. Passanetti tracking along in fourth, two and a half lengths from the lead. Appalachian Chief is losing a little bit of ground. To Hunter's Aim is racing on the inside, five lengths from the front. Imaginary Sword is racing out there. Three wide, just five or six lengths from the lead as well. Five Beta Dock has given up the inside to hold it, hold it, hold it. Followed in the outside by Special Dancer, break it three. The highest bidder, American Falcon, and Middleworth Bay is the trailer. Fairly easy pace as they enter the far turn. And it is North Eastbound who shows the way. Pressed by press type on the inside. The night sky is right there. And Passanetti is racing a close fourth. Just perched in fourth. Still got some run left. Meanwhile, Phi Beta Doc has got to come four or five wide entering the lane as they turn for home now. Northeast bound press type. Phi Beta Doc on the outside. The night sky is next and Passanetti seizes the moment. One off the inside. Here comes Passanetti on the inside but Phi Beta Doc's under a confident ride. Phi Beta Doc. Passanetti driving on the inside. Phi Beta Doc as on the inside. Passanetti tries to run with that one but it's Phi Beta Doc. Phi Beta Doc passing the Virginia Derby with flying colors to win it by a length and a half. Phi Beta Doc, last seen in New York, uh, running in, running fourth in the Lawrence Realization only about a week or so ago. Wheeled right back and gets another win here. Uh, this was the Saranac winner from up in Saratoga. Good, impressive win on the outside under Ramon Dominguez. Uh, he had to swing wide after getting a nice covered up inside trip most of the going. Bringing a nice, uh, nice wide, wide effort into the stretch here, holding off uh, Passanetti, who did who was setting part of the early pace. Uh, Phi Beta Doc took the lead. Passanetti rallied at him again down on the rail, not able to uh, to get to him once more. Northeast bound, also a front runner earlier on in the going, holding on for the third spot here. Three-year-old gelding Phi Beta Doc, sired by Doc's leader. He is owned by Dennis Foster and Robert Leonard. Trained by Robert Leonard, ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez, completing the mile and an eighth distance in one minute fifty-nine and four fifth seconds. Next, we're going to be heading to the Meadowlands for the Cliffhanger Handicap, which was the featured event on Friday night's card. This is a Grade Three event, going for a hundred and fifty thousand dollar purse. It's for three-year-olds and up, a mile and a sixteenth on the turf course. Let's head down to the Meadowlands for the call of Friday night's Cliffhanger. And they're off in the cliffhanger. And from the outside of the field comes Cryptic Rascal from between horses. It's Boyce. And on the inside, Star Connection. Star Connection and Boyce running one too early. Right there is a little luck in the third spot with Cryptic Rascal just off them in fourth. On the outside, that's Doc Martin ranging up. Saving ground is Virginia Carnival as they round the first turn. It's Star Connection, Jose Santos with the early lead. Star Connection by a length and a half. On the outside, Boyce is now into second. Virginia Carnival is third. A Little Luck is racing fourth. Grape Shot right there between horses fifth. Cryptic Rascal is sixth as they race down the backstretch. Doc Martin is seventh on the outside. Minero saves ground towards the rail followed by a perfect red ransom between horses musical ghost just six lengths off the lead and then come the trailers roberto's pride at the back 12th and last premier chris g the half 48 the opening quarter was 23 and three star connection trying to go all the way voice is threatening with a little luck right there on the inside virginia carnival cryptic rascal now trying to get into it as well as Virginia Carnival on the inside moves up now as they tighten up past the quarter pole. Three quarters, one, 12 and one. It's been Star Connection so far. Star Connection still there. Virginia Carnival looking to move off the rail now and take a shot. They're on their way home in the cliffhanger. And it's Star Connection trying to go all the way now. Virginia Carnival is bearing down. Great shot within earshot on the outside. Full out is Star Connection. Desperate now. Virginia Carnival and great shot on the outside. And it is very tight between Virginia Carnival and Star Connection. Virginia Carnival, a bit of an upset here at almost 23 to 1, getting a nice inside trip from Jean-Luc Samin. We'll see another nice inside trip from Jean-Luc a little bit later on in the program. Getting up for a nose victory, hard fought nose over front runner Star Connection. Star Connection uh, had been running 
very competitively in New York for Stanley Huff. Sent down to the cliffhanger handicap, sent off at 4-1, to one, not able to hold off the late charge of Virginia Carnival. This is a 7-year-old Kentucky-bred horse who was winning his first stake since 1996. This one was away from the races for almost two years for Jonathan Shepard, coming back in his, just his second start of the, uh, of the season off of that layoff getting the victory here in the third spot grape shot a horse who was uh, was the tepid favorite at 27 to 10 uh, getting up for the third spot from off the pace after stalking a little bit but a very good run here and a game one nose victory by virginia carnival virginia carnival as i mentioned a seven-year-old horse sired by carnival bred in kentucky owned by john franks trained by jonathan shepherd and ridden to victory by jean-luc samin completing the mile in a 60 16th distance on the turf course in 142 and 2 fifth seconds. Saturday night's featured event at the Meadowlands was the Patterson Handicap, $100,000 added. Three year olds and up going a mile and a 16th on the main track. Let's head back down to the Meadowlands for the call of the Patterson Handicap. And they're off in the Patterson Stakes. And from the outside comes Smart Guy and Robert Colton to the front. It's going to be Smart Guy. Capsized and moving through. Carry My Colors now. And into the first turn, Carry My Colors and Smart Guy are matching strides around the first turn. On the inside, Capsized is third. Alongside that one, Talks Cheap is fourth. Then a gap of two lengths to Dancing Rahi, fifth. And the Gray Gander is sixth, about eight lengths off the early lead. 23 and three for the first quarter. And it's Carry My Colors. John Velasquez, the pacemaker, down the back stretch. Smart guy just off him is second on the outside. Down the back stretch. Talks cheap, ranges up into third. It's capsized, saving ground in fourth. Then it's Gander in the fifth spot on the outside, followed by Dancing Rahi. Midway up the back stretch, the half 46 and two fifths. Carry My Colors at six to one here, continues in front. On the inside, Smart Guy with a great trip. Tox Cheap still stocking on the outside, hasn't been asked yet. Picks it up a little bit, capsized between horses. Now Gander starts to roll on the outside from fifth. And then it's Dancing Rahi still trailing. Three quarters, one, ten, and four. It's a good clip. They try to close in on Carry My Colors. Tox Cheap now commits himself on the outside. Here comes the great Gander on the outside. But just two lengths from front to back here. They're on their way home in the Patterson Stakes. Then it's Tox Cheap on the inside. Gander is bearing down. Tox Cheap and Gander. And here comes Dancing Rahi trying to pull off the big rally on the outside. Tox Cheap, Tox Cheap. Yes, indeed. It is Tox Cheap holding up. Talks Cheap, making only his second start back off of a bit of a layoff, getting the win here by a length, uh, stalking the early leaders, making a three-wide move on the turn, and gamely holding off Gander in the late final strides. Talks Cheap had been uh, very competitive in New York earlier in the season for Linda Rice, was, uh, was taken out of uh, training with an injury, has returned to the races with a nice allowance win, and now a victory in the $100,000 added uh, Patterson handicap down at the Meadowlands. Gander returning off of a very good effort in the Woodward Stakes in which he ran very wide against some very competitive horses. Comes back to the races in very good shape, losing by only a length or so in a hard-fought uh, late charging effort while four wide. Finishing third, Danson Rahi closing from uh, well off the pace, finishing on a wide move him himself. The winner talks cheap, a three-year-old chestnut colt bred in Kentucky, sired by Corporate Report, is owned by H.V. Quadracci and the Team Kanani Stable, trained by Linda Rice, ridden to victory by Mike Luzzi, completing the mile in a 16th distance in 1 minute 42 seconds flat. Next, we're going to be heading to Philadelphia Park, where the featured event on Saturday was the Grade 2 Cotillion Handicap. The $200,000 purse for three-year-old Phillies going a mile and a 16th on the main track. Let's head down to Philly Park now for Saturday's Cotillion Stakes. They're off. Skipping around comes out smoothly, as does Strolling Bell. At the inside, here comes Awful Smart. Down nearest the rail is Waltz, and from the outside, Boomtown Girl, and with Flair. Awful Smart into the first turn, leading it by about a half length. Strolling Bell is on her outside second. Waltz coming through at the inside to be third. Boomtown Girl moving three wide into the fourth spot. Farther out is with Flair fifth. Skipping around is in between runners sixth. 
A length and a half to Wittenberg, who has come out of the seventh position. Followed next by Madison's Charmin at the back are Belle Cherie and Tutorial. Initial quarter was 23 and two-fifths. Up the back stretch they go. It's Awful Smart, who's now clear by almost two lengths. She continues to be tracked by Strolling Bell second. Two lengths to the trio, a boomtown girl with Flair and Waltz. Waltz at the inside. Skipping around, beginning to make progress out the fourth pass. She's now about four lengths behind. She's followed next by Wittenberg. Belle Cherie and Madison's Charm both have six to make up. And Tutorial is at back with three furlongs to go. 46 and three for the half. Awful smart, still unchallenged up front, five sixteenths to go. She leads it by a length. But here comes Strolling Bell on the attack now, and skipping around has joined the fray while moving three wide. Three of them come to the top of the stretch together. Awful smart at the inside, Strolling Bell in between horses. Skipping around is poised on the outside. Two and a half back to Waltz in fourth. Bell Cherie has found her best ride and looks to close on the far outside. Less than a furlong to go. Skipping around has forged a short lead. Strolling Bell hard pressed to stay with her. Bell Cherie continues to close in. Skipping around has the lead 70 yards from home. It will be Skipping Around who prevails. Skipping Around's got it by three parts of a length. Strolling Bell. Skipping around, getting the upset win here at 16 to 1 from off the pace, running down Strolling Bell, who was set into the uh, set out early, chasing the early pace at her awful smart, leaving her with just not quite enough left to hold off Skipping Around's late rally. Uh, Waltz, who was uh, just off the pace early, split rivals into the stretch and uh, and ran very nice at nicely at 42 to 1 to move up into the show spot here. Skipping Around is a three-year-old daughter of Skip Trial, bred in Florida, now a consecutive winner of three races. She's owned by Arthur Appleton, trained by Bob Kamak, ridden to victory by Mike McCarthy, completing the mile in a 16th distance in 1.43 and 2.5 seconds. Next, we're going to head down to Louisiana Downs, where the 20th Super Derby was run on Saturday. The Grade 1 Super Derby for the $500,000 purse run for three-year-olds going a mile and a quarter on the main track. Let's head down to Louisiana Downs for the call of Saturday's Super Derby. All in line in the Grade 1 Super Derby 20. And there they go. Great start for Brassy Wells. He shoots right up to the front. Answer Lively showing his speed as well. And there goes Answer Lively to do right up to the front. And it's Answer Lively out racing Brassy Wells for the lead. Acton Park right there in third position. Temperance time is in fourth. He's five from the front. Two back to Captain Countdown. He's taken to the rail, racing along in fifth. Bosque County in sixth. Menifee is in seventh. And a good lick as they go past the stands the first time. And the last horse is Pineath. And Carlos Gonzalez trying to settle down Answer Lively as he zips into the first turn. Brassy Wells just off of him in second. Ecton Park third. Captain Countdown. The gray at the rail in fourth. Temperance time is settled back. Fifth five from the front. Menifee along his inside in sixth. Then it's two and a half back to Bosque County. Pineaff trails by a dozen as they get to the three-quarter mile marker. And it's Carlos Gonzalez and Answer Lively setting the drag on him as they turn onto the back stretch. Brassy Wells in pursuit in second. Ecton Park thirds. Captain Countdown at the rail in fourth. Temperance time to the outside in fifth. Menifee is six. He's about five from the front. And both Temperance time and Menifee beginning to creep up towards the lead. It's a gap of five back to Bosque County. Pineaff still needs to make up 10. A half mile to run in the Super Derby. It's been Answer Lively every step of the way. He leads it a length and a tail from Brassy Wells in second. Ecton Park still third. Captain Countdown in fourth. Still Temperance Time and Menifee. Those two stride for stride as they get to the far turn. Answer Lively three furlongs from the wire. He still is in front by just about a length. Still off of him. Brassy Wells. Ecton Park in third. Temperance Time. Menifee is in behind horses. Menifee needs to make up two and they have to get to Ecton Park. A short lead. Brassy Wells goes by Answer Lively. Menifee still in a stalking position. They come for home, and it's Ecton Park, and Menifee has to run him down. Ecton Park turns for home, leading it by two. Menifee, a clear path to get that leader now. Pineapp from last is coming on to take over third. Ecton Park still in front by over two. Menifee doing his best. Pineapp third, 16th pull, and it'll be Ecton Park to win it. Ecton Park beats out Menifee and Pineapp. Ecton Park under the wine to take Super Derby 20. Ecton Park in a bit of a mild upset here from just off the pace. 
uh, making a nice move early pace setter answer lively last year's two-year-old champion had nothing left in the drive as he fades to sixth uh, he showed good speed Ecton Park sat just off the early pace of answer lively and brassy wells and made a nice move into the victory spot here with a big three wide move under Alex Solis Menifee was held back uh, as he has done his best running from off the pace Pat Day made a nice move with him clearly second best in here third Pineaff making his patented rally from well off the pace but uh, just a, a really exciting event here Elliot Walden had been saying for some time that this three-year-old 49er cult really didn't deserve to be considered uh, one of the top horses in the three-year-old division. Had a nice long freshening this spring after a disappointing effort in the Kentucky Derby and has come back in very good shape here, upsetting uh, one of the highest ranked three-year-olds in the country at uh, at fairly good odds three and a half to one here over stablemate Menifee those of you who are uh, wagering on this race had the opportunity to wager on uh, these horses as a separate betting interest due to the rules of racing in Louisiana the winner Ecton Park a three-year-old chestnut colt by 49er he was bred in Kentucky he's owned by Mark Stanley trained by Elliot Walden completing the Super Derby mile and a quarter distance in two minutes and two fifth seconds we are going to pause now for a brief break. When we come back, we'll have racing to action to bring to you from California, New York, and Paris, France. Please stay with us. It's a stakes weekend spectacular at Belmont and Keeneland this weekend, with a total of 10 stakes races carded. There are six stakes events from Belmont on Saturday, with a grade one $1 million jockey club gold cup for three olds and up as the main attraction. Also carded will be the Grade 1, $600,000 Turf Classic Invitational for 3-year-olds and up. The Grade 1, $400,000 Champagne Stakes for 2-year-olds. The Grade 1, $500,000 Belle Dame for Phillies and Mares, 3-year-olds and up. And the Grade 1, $400,000 Frisette for 2-year-old Phillies. Sunday finds the Grade 3, $100,000 Added Gallant Bloom Handicap for Phillies and Mares, 3-year-olds and up. It's opening weekend at Keeneland, and that features the Grade 1 $500,000 Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup Invitational for three-year-old fillies, and the Grade 2 $400,000 Shadwell Keeneland Turf Mile for three-year-olds and up both on Saturday. Sunday's action finds the Grade 2 $400,000 Lanes and Breeders Futurity for two-year-olds, and the Grade 3 $200,000 Fayette Breeders Cup for three-year-olds and up. At Caller Saturday, It'll be the $300,000 Smile Sprint Stakes for three-year-olds and up. Catch all of the exciting fall racing action at any Capital OTB location. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. Next, we're going to be heading to Northern California, where the featured event on Saturday was the California Sprint Championship. This is a race restricted to California breads, yet one which still has fairly important implications in the terms of Breeders' Cup competition, bringing together a very tough field of good sprinters. The purse is $125,000. It's for three-year-olds and up, going six furlongs. Let's head to Bay Meadows now for the call of the California Sprint Championship. And there they go. Peach Flat is going out for the early lead today. A star is second. Big Jack third to the far outside. Love that red up close to the inside. Last Mango in Paris is the trailer. As expected, it's Peach Flat on the lead by more than a length and a quarter. Today, a star between runners is second. Love that red is third along the inside. Big Jack to the far outside. Then Last Mango in Paris. Three lengths covers the field. Opening quarter one in 22 and three advancing to the 3-8. Peach flat three parts of a length today. A star trying to inch closer in second. Big Jag is, in, is traveling nicely to the far outside. Then we're gonna love that red two lengths from the front. And last mango in Paris trails. Through the far turn, Peach flat keeps that lead. Love that red making a sharp move to the inside. Big Jag close up to the far outside. They're in the lane in the California Sprint Championship. Peach flat between runners. Big Jag to the outside. Love that red to the inside. These three get it on. Big Jag, Peach flat. Love that red back to third. It's Big Jag and Peach flat. They drive to the wire with Big Jag. Big Jag to win the California Sprint Championship. Big Jag, very fast horse out on the California circuit, has been uh, been very tough. 
throughout the year, getting the win here in a rather explosive performance from just off, from off the pace here. Early front runner Peach Flat was not able to hold off Big Jag as he makes his usual move, winning by a half a length here as the 11 to 10 favorite. Peach Flat holding uh, holding off the rest of the all chargers and uh, holding off the uh, the late run of Love That Red, who uh, tried to rally from second, was not able to get up and make any ground at all in the late going. Big Jag, I'm sure, is one that we will see being pointed for the Breeders' Cup sprint, has been uh, sprinting very competitively on the West Coast all year. Big Jag is a six-year-old brown gelding. He was sired by Clevin, bred in California. He's owned by Julius Celesi, trained by Tim Pinfield, ridden to victory by Jose Valdivia, completing the six for a long distance in one minute nine and one-fifth seconds. Next, we're going to be heading to Southern California, where racing action has shifted to Santa Anita Park. Uh, we're going to start things off with last Wednesday's opening feature at Santa Anita. This is the Grade 3 Senator Ken Maddie Handicap. $100,000 for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going the about distance of six and a half furlongs on the hillside course on the turf. Let's head out to Santa Anita for the call of Wednesday's Ken Maddie Handicap. Where they go. APSA bobbled at the start and Holy Hope was off a little slow. From the outside gate, it's Valid Leader very fast, but now there goes EQDN to take over and Teresa's Tizzy the Grey. EQDN and Teresa's Tizzy very fast. APSA's come through to get third. In behind that is Royal Shyness in the white colours, been followed by Holy Hope along the inside. They're flying early. Seattle Carla is next. Desert Lady has six lengths to make up. Then Miss Hot Seltzer. Hula Queen is racing outside of that and Janine Rose's last 12 lengths would cover them all. They head to the 3 8 pole and EQDN now opens up to lead by two and a half. Teresa's Tizzy just bobbled a little there and lost her position. Coming through second is Valid Lisa. On the outside, Seattle Carla is right there too. In behind her comes Royal Shyness in the white cap. Only three off them. Then Hula Queen. Oh, they've been carried wide. Seattle Carla and Hula Queen were. In behind this leading bunch is Desert Lady who still got four to make up but coming with a game run. They homeward bound EQDN but now on the outside Side, it's Hula Queen and Hula Queen is coming like an express train. Desert Lady getting involved late, but Hula Queen, an awesome performance today. Hula Queen and Alex Solis take the Ken Maddie convincingly. Desert Lady second. Hula Queen showing that she really enjoys that downhill turf course, getting a little bit of a slow start, settling early and making a huge move into the leading spot here, winning by three and a half lengths, a very convincing effort by this filly at long odds, 15 to one. Desert Lady in the second spot also making up quite a bit of ground. She was in tight in the early going, but uh, Gary Stevens able to find some running room for her as the 16 to 10 favorite, getting her up in a late move for a second. A QDN showing very good speed on the early portion of the race did drift out a little bit in the uh, in the drive to the wire, holding on for a very game third place finish over Janine Rose, who did finish up in the fourth spot here. Hula Queen is a four-year-old Kentucky bred mare or five-year-old Kentucky bred mare. She was sired by Irish River. She is owned by the Firmamento Corporation, trained by Luis Seglin, ridden to victory by Alex Solis. She completes the about mile or the about distance at six and a half furlongs on the downhill turf in one minute 13 seconds flat. Next, we're going to head into the weekend stakes action at Santa Anita, the featured event on Saturday, the Grade 1 Yellow Ribbon Stakes, $500,000 for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going a mile and a quarter on the turf course. Let's head out to California now for the call of Saturday's Yellow Ribbon. Be off any second. Oh, way to go. Candy Lonely coming away well and Tranquility Lake in the white cap up on her outside. Those two go on to lead them early. Toosler in the white colours settling down in the third spot. Racing up on the outside of her is Shabby Chic as contender settle down in fourth five off the leaders who are going a good pace. Here's Fiji. She's racing in the centre of the track in the fifth position. Spanish Fern is back second last. Natalie's Cafe Latte, the trailer, a good 14 off these leaders. Coming past the sands with one lap to go in the yellow ribbon and it's Candy 
Candy Lonely on the inside of Tranquility Lake. Those two have opened up a good six lengths. Tuzla, though, is just ambling along in the third spot, and Fiji's racing right up alongside of Tuzla. Tuzla and Fiji locked together in the third spot. Shabby Sheik is now in fifth. She's a good eight lengths off those leaders. It's another four back to Spanish Fern. Spanish Fern starting to make headway now, though, and Cafe Latte is leaving herself a lot to do. She's got to be a good 18 off these leaders. They swing on to the back stretch, and Eddie Dallahuse takes Tranquility Lake clear now. Tranquility Lake, Candy Lonely down at the rail, but Tuzla and Fiji. Tuzla's going extremely well in the white colours. Fiji has her boxed in right now, though, as they run past the half mile. A gap of six back to Shabby Sheik. Spanish Fern starting to roll on the outside of her, and Cafe Latte now nine off the leaders. Into the turn they go, and it's Tranquility Lake. Candy Lonely trying to hang tough at the rail. Fiji getting a tap on the shoulder now being pushed along on the outside. Tuzla continues to go magnificently. Can Tuzla get out of there? Spanish Fern and Cafe Latte. They lining up at the top of the stretch in the yellow ribbon. Tranquility Lake. Tuzla pulled to the outside, but Spanish Fern got first run. Fiji did not go on. Cafe Latte on the outside, but it's Spanish Fern in full flight for the wire. Spanish Fern going to go on to take the yellow ribbon, and it's Spanish Fern and Chris McCarran striding home to beat Cafe Latte. Spanish Fern beating a very, very competitive field of fillies and mares on the turf, coming from off the pace in a very sharp one and a quarter length victory here under Chris McCarran. Last time out, uh, just beaten by a neck in the Ramona handicap, was able to improve off of that race, run a very nice effort here to run to uh, beat Cafe Latte, who was running hard very late, unhurried in the early going, made a nice move uh, coming wide into the stretch under Corey Nakatani was not able to make up enough ground on the winner. Third place finisher Shabby Sheik uh, also ran a little bit awkwardly in the early going, didn't have a very good start, saved some ground and made a nice bid late. Rather disappointing performances in here from uh, favored Fiji, who was uh, away for a year. She was last year's winner of this race. She was also the champion filly or mare on the grass last year. A little bit uh, disappointing, but a difficult, uh, difficult race for her to come back in, going a mile and a quarter at, uh, at top-level competition off of a long, long layoff. Hopefully we will see more from her if she has come out of this race in good condition. I'm sure that they are expecting to head straight to the Breeders' Cup turf uh, for fillies and mares with uh, with Fiji. Also disappointing, Tranquility Lake, who showed good speed and faded very badly. Uh, Tuzla, who I think may be suited for a little bit shorter distance than a mile and a quarter, uh, a little bit disappointing. She chased the early pace and had nothing left for the drive either. So uh, kind of disappointing efforts from some of the, uh, the some of the higher rated fillies on the West Coast. Spanish Fern, a very sharp effort. Trainer Bobby Frankel had actually considered bringing her east and sending her in Saturday's or Sunday's Flower Bowl at Belmont Park. So it looks like he made the right decision, getting the Grade One victory on the West Coast, uh, on the right there on the home track. The winner, Spanish Fern, is a four-year-old brown filly. She is uh, Kentucky bred, sired by El Gran Senor. She's owned by the Judmont Farms, trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden to victory by Chris McCarran. She completes the mile and a quarter on the firm turf course, one minute 59 and two fifth seconds. Sunday's featured event at Santa Anita was the Oak Tree Turf Championship, also a grade one event with a $300,000 purse. It's for three-year-olds and up going a mile and a quarter on the turf course. Let's head back out to Santa Anita once more now for the call of the Oak Tree Turf Championship. All set for the Oak Tree Turf Championship. Bills sent on their way with Lazy Load getting a smart break on the outside and Mash One in the white colours coming through on his inside. Majorian is right there and now Docksider takes hold of the bit and Docksider pulls his way up to third. Bonapartiste is the grey racing back in the four spot, four lengths off the leaders and at the back of the pack is Seo Shan. Coming through the stretch first time round, lazy load between horses, mash one down at the rail and Docksider tugging his way up on the outside of them. Those three go clear to lead it by his three and a half lengths. Majorian just tracking them in the fourth spot. Bonapartiste now second last, but only five off the leaders. And Sayashan just loping along comfortably at the back. 
Into the first turn they go and Lazy Load now gets a clear advantage just over a length in front. Docksider is right there in the second spot. Down at the rail comes Mash 1. Bonapartiste is the grey, only three lengths off the leaders. Majorian outside of that. And Sayashan, quite content to trail early, only five lengths off this leader. They have half the journey covered in the Oak Tree Turf Championship. Lazy Load continues to lead them. Docksider now putting the pressure on in second and Mash one a length and a half back third. Majorian and Bonapartiste are both four and a half off the leaders and Sayashan just tracking them by a length. They've less than a half mile to go and Lazy Load and Docksider now kick for home and those two open up going into the far turn. Lazy Load at the rail and Docksider, they've gone clear by four lengths. Nash One is racing in second. Bonaparte is trying to get off the rail to find some room and now Sayashan is winding up on the outside of Majorian. Coming to the top of the lane, Lazy Load, Docksider now gets a tap on the shoulder. Nash One at the rail, Bonaparte, Majorian on the outside, it's wide open. Nash One sneaking through down at the rail. Mash one, lazy low, Docksider can find no more. Bonaparte not quite doing enough, but Mash one is. And Mash one striding clear in the lane. Mash one and David Flores take the Oak Tree Turf Championship. Mash one, lazy low. Mash one getting an upset victory. Longest shot on the board at 12 to 1 under David Flores. Made a nice move from just off the pace. Early pace setter, lazy load, holding on for second here. Uh, two length defeat by, uh, by Mash one holding off, off the late charge of Bonapartiste under uh, Chris McCarron, who made a nice move from well off the pace. He saved quite a bit of ground early, made a late move, but was not able to catch the first two rivals. MASH won uh, last seen running sixth in New York in the Man of War. May have needed that race off of a bit of a layoff. Came back uh, out to California, his home base racetrack, with a very nice win at very nice odds here. MASH One is a five-year-old chestnut horse sired by MASH Core. He was bred in Chile. He is owned by the Ammerman Racing Corporation and the Palumbo Operation, trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden to victory by David Flores, completing the mile and a quarter in the, on the turf course labeled firm in one minute, 59 seconds flat. We are going to pause now for our second break, and when we come back, we'll have racing action to bring to you from Belmont Park and from Longchamp in Paris. Please stay with us. There's no feeling quite like having your picture taken in the winner's circle. But owning a racehorse can be a very risky investment. That's where the New York Breeding and Racing Program comes in. Now with $32 million annually in purses and incentives for registered New York breads. You got a family sport, you got a, uh, something you really thoroughly enjoy, and you have a chance to really hit it big and get lucky. You put your money in a CD, boring, boring. You got a racehorse. It's just a, a lot of enthusiasm, and it's, it's an experience that you will never forget. It is the greatest thrill. It's the thrill of a lifetime. So invest in the thrill of owning a New York bread. They start with an advantage. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. Next, we're going to be finishing up the, uh, the stakes action with Belmont Park. Ashley T. Cole Handicap was the featured co-featured event on Saturday. This is for New York Breads going for a $50,000 purse. Three-year-olds and up going a mile on the, main, or on the turf course at Belmont Park. Let's head down for Saturday's Ashley T. Cole Handicap at Belmont. And they're off. Tomlin's flag comes out first. Chasing Women is right up there. And there goes Emma ready to run. Emma ready to run. Charges through to take the lead. And Tomlin's flag is second on the outside. Peebo's guy pumped up and hard held back in third position. Then it's Dr. Cat between horses fourth. Chasing Women fifth on the inside. Plato's Love in the clear on the outside running along in sixth. Talavera's in mid-pack seventh. Followed by Abenaki No Secrets and Topsy Gem. Moving down the back stretch, chasing Emma ready to run through a quarter in 23 seconds flat. Five furlongs to go, Emma ready to run, still the leader, three quarters of a length. Tomlin's flag, steady pressure second. Peebo's guy at tracking third. On the inside, chasing woman is fourth. Dr. Cat asked for run now, fifth on the outside. 
two lengths back to a currency arbitrage between horses running sixth. On the outside, it's Plato's Love, followed by Abenaki, No Secrets, Topsy, Jim, and Talavera. Three furlongs from the line. The half went in 45 and four, and Tomlin's flag has assumed the lead and did it willingly, and leads by two as they turn for home. Peebo's guys second on the outside. The early leader, Amaretti to run, is now back to third. Then it's Chasing Women fourth. Currency arbitrage in behind Chasing Women on the far outside. Topsy Jim is closing ground late. Abenaki looking for running room at the rail. No secrets moving late. In the final furlong now, Chasing Women's got the lead. Chasing Women, nothing left for Tomlin's flag. It's Chasing Women in front. Peebles Guy is second. Currency arbitrage and Topsy Jim. Chasing Women, the winner at 28 to 1. Chasing Women, a surprise winner here at 28 to 1 in his first try on the turf course. Obviously took to it very nicely. This is a son of belong to me, so he certainly has the pedigree angle covered. Making a nice move, rated very nicely inside for Jean-Luc Semin. Very nice, another uh, nice inside out type of move from Jean-Luc on the turf this weekend. Uh, made a nice angling out move, coming three wide into the drive, drawing clear late by two and a quarter lengths. Peebo's guy from uh, breaking from the outside uh, post position number 11 showing his usual good tactical speed and uh, holding on very nicely here not able to to hold off the late charge of uh, chase and women but a very good second place effort here over the third place finisher currency arbitrage had a little trouble getting out of the gate he did stumble uh, leaving the gate wasn't able to get into good prominent early position but uh, made a nice rally well late into the into the race for the third spot nosing out uh, fourth spot finisher topsy jim a, uh, a good effort, though, here from first-time turfer by Belong to Me, Chasin' Women. He is a uh, four-year-old Bay Gelding, bred and owned by Seymour Cohn, of course, New York bred, trained by John Hurtler, who, uh, after the race, said that he was sorry he didn't try this, this four-year-old on the turf earlier. He had been a prominent three-year-old last year, had a long layoff, uh, came back in somewhat less than, uh, than the form that he had been showing earlier in his career, but certainly responded nicely to the switch onto the grass course. Uh, Hurtler is expected to point this one for the Mohawk Handicap on New York Showcase Day as his next start. Ashley T. Cole winner, Chasing Women completes the one mile distance under Jean-Luc Semin in one minute 34 and four fifth seconds. Next on the docket on Saturday's card at Belmont Park, the Grade 3 Noble Damsel Handicap. For three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going a mile on the turf course, the purse here is $100,000 added. Let's head back down to Belmont Park for the call of the Noble Damsel. They're in the gate, and they're off. And there goes Cyrillic, right to the lead. Cyrillic in front early. Kumbamela has come away running second. On the inside, Final Tango rides the rails in third, seeking the pearls right up there, racing in fourth. And then it's you and me who's reined in to run back in fifth position. Let's get Cozy is rating back in sixth. Siberian Mirage also under restraint on the outside seventh. And Malt will be the early trailer as the field moves down the back stretch. There goes Seeking the Pearl. Seeking the Pearl making an early move for the lead in front by a head. Final Tango comes right back to counter. Those two heads apart for the lead with Cyrillic right up there with them on the outside and Kumamela four wide as the field moves into the far turn. Seeking the pearl, final tango on the outside. Cyrillic races third. Kumamela's now tailed off three and a half lengths from the lead. Then it's you and me and down toward the inside comes Siberian Mirage five lengths back to Malt and let's get cozy as drop back to trail the field. Around the far turn and through the first five furlongs here, it has been Final Tango seeking the pearl. And on the outside, Cerberuk, the three of them still heads apart for the lead. Let's get Cozy had to check in behind Kumbamela. On the outside, you and me is set down for the drive. They're coming into the final furlong now. Here's Kumbamela's got running room. And with a decisive thrust, Kumbamela has taken the lead with an impressive burst of speed. It's Kumbamela now by three. Then seeking the pearl, Cyrillic, and you and me under the line. Kumbamela, much the best.
Kumba Mila getting an impressive win here, drawing off nicely to win by five lengths. Uh, as you saw, going up the backstretch, heading into the turn, she was rather wide, about four or five horses wide. It appeared that she was going to be forced out on the turn. Jose Santos riding very nicely, clever riding here on the turf, taking this one back. You heard the uh, the call there. Uh, it appeared to uh, to Tom Durkin that she was actually dropping back, and he was actually taking her back, getting her down onto the rail where she's done some very good running in the past. Very impressive win here, splitting horses late and just exploding in the lane to win by five lengths. You and me rallying into the second spot from well off the pace. Uh, making a nice move here, another one making a bit of a wide move, three wide under Joe Bravo. Third place finisher Cyrillic uh, was chasing the early pace, uh, early in the going. She uh, she chased the early pace of uh, of seeking the pearl and uh, and final tango uh, seeking the pearl. Of course, the Japanese filly who had done very well uh, as certainly a very high purse earner had been competing very nicely against international type competition. Uh, John Velasquez did say that she was just a little bit a uh, little bit eager, didn't want to relax. It was her first race back off of a long layoff, and uh, Velasquez and her connections are expecting considerably uh, considerable improvement next time out. She uh, she was a little bit difficult to handle for uh, for John Velasquez in the early going, but uh, take nothing away from the winner, Kumba Mila. Very impressive performance by this filly. Kumba Mila is a four-year-old bay filly sired by Heroes Honor. She was bred by the uh, Aras du Mesre in Ireland. She is owned by the Aras du Mesre, trained by Christophe Clement, ridden to victory by Jose Santos, completing the mile distance in one minute, 34 and two-fifths seconds. Next, we're going to be heading into Sunday's racing at Belmont Park, the co-featured event on the card, the Bertram Bongard Handicap. This is for two-year-olds for $50,000 purse. Two-year-olds going seven furlongs on the main track, and it is restricted to New York breads. Let's head down to Belmont now for the call of the Bongard. They're in the gate. <laughs> and they're off. Play a sultry tune, bounces out on the lead. It's play a sultry tune out there. By length with True Force running in second now. Lord Alley moves to third on the inside. Entrepreneur and Image Maker moving up the back stretch now, and it's a very tight pack. Two and a half lengths front to back, and there goes Lord Alley. Lord Alley to grab a short lead from play a sultry tune. Then True Force, and on the outside, Entrepreneur, the four of them in a scramble for the lead, with Image Maker not far behind, and Image Maker's moving now. A 22 and 3 first quarter as the field races past the half mile pole. True Force now puts ahead in front. On the outside, Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur now puts ahead in front. The third leader in the race, and it is Entrepreneur in front as they approach the top of the stretch. True Force and Lord Alley on the inside. Here comes Image Maker. Five lengths to play a sultry tune. Coming to the top of the stretch. Entrepreneur in front. Image Maker takes aim. Off the turn. Into the stretch. Entrepreneur comes, Entrepreneur comes a bit wide. Image Maker will try to make his run on the inside. They're coming into the last furlong. Entrepreneur fully extended here by Shane Sellers. Image Maker and Jorge Chavez, who is relentless on the inside. Here comes Image Maker under the perseverant Jorge Chavez. He'll win his fourth. Image Maker wins it by two. Entrepreneur second. A dozen lengths back to the third horse, Lord Alley. Image Maker getting a nice two-length win here over the favorite entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneur and uh, and Lord Alley had some trouble getting out of the gate. Uh, they did bump pretty hard coming out of the gate. Both hit the gate. They kind of uh, ricocheted around, hit the gates, hit one another. Uh, Iron uh, our Image Maker able to uh, able to hold off those horses uh, and make a nice run into the stretch here. Uh, Image Maker was hustled out of the gate. Ended up a little bit. Uh, little bit wide going into the turn, but a nice move here under George Chavez to get the two length win over the heavy favorite entrepreneur. Many lengths, 13, almost 14 lengths back to the third place finisher, Lord Alley, who after his difficult start was hustled up early and uh, didn't have much left when, uh, when the real running was being done. Image Maker is a two-year-old cult. He was bred in New York, sired by Distinctive Pro, bred by the CBF Corporation, and owned by James F. Edwards, trained by Jim Bond, ridden to victory by George Chavez. Completes the seven furlong distance in one minute, 24 and one-fifth seconds. 
Next, we're going to be completing the Belmont Park Stakes action for the weekend with the Grade 1 Flower Bowl Invitational Handicap. $500,000 out there for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going a mile and a quarter on the turf course. Let's head down to Belmont once more for the call of the Flower Bowl Invitational. And they're off. And Heritage of Gold was off to a good start. Coretta comes away in good order as well as Moss Flower is backed off the early pace and Natalie Two takes to the inside fourth. The field makes their way into the clubhouse turn and Heritage of Gold is out to establish the early lead. Coretta's alongside, running along in second. Moss Flower on the outside is third. Natalie Two saving ground at the hedge in fourth. And then it's inside, running up in fifth position, only about four or five lengths from an easy pace that's being established here by Heritage of Gold. Lingering at the back through the easy early furlongs, our squeak and soaring softly is the last of them all. Heritage of Gold through a very deliberate first quarter that goes in 25 seconds flat. She is unchallenged on the lead. Coretta's alongside and well in hand there by Jose Santos. Running along in second position, Moss Flower is cruising in third. Then it's Natalie Two who continues on the inside of Insight, the French filly who's running in fifth, soaring softly and squeak at the back of the pack, but the pace is slow and the pack is tight through an opening half mile in a pokey 50 and four fifth seconds. The pace is very slow to develop here and the tactical advantage goes to the front runner. Heritage of Gold, a short lead with four furlongs to go. Coretta still alongside and still in hand. And then it's Moss Flower. The French filly insights in between horses. Natalie too has enjoyed a perfect trip, saving ground all the way. Soaring softly is asked for her run now by Jerry Bailey and squeak as the last of them all. They're coming to the top of the stretch. It is still heritage of gold the leader by a half length coretta right alongside moss flower three wide soaring softly four wide insight down toward the inside headlong into the final furlong coretta kicks in short lead heritage of gold soaring softly charging on the outside moss flower is fourth and insight it's soaring softly a narrow lead coretta grudgingly gives way as they come down to the line soaring softly the winner by length coretta was second moss flower was third Soaring softly, bouncing back after a disappointing effort in the Diana up at Saratoga, getting a convincing length win here over Coretta. Coretta pressing the early pace of Heritage of Gold, holds on nicely for second over Moss Flower, who once again makes a nice rally into the third spot. Uh, was, was a little bit on the flat side, no big move or acceleration, but held on very nicely for the third spot. Soaring softly uh, had been uh, had been training very sharply on the turf. Suffered her first turf defeat last time out in the Diana. Unfortunately, she was running, uh, trying to run into a very slow pace that day. They uh, they ran very slow early and very late, very fast late in the Diana. The uh, the pace here on uh, on Sunday was also a little bit slow, but soaring softly had the advantage of uh, of getting clear and being able to make that move under Jerry Bailey, and just uh, a very game effort here by the winner. Uh, it is expected that uh, the trainer Jimmy Toner will be sending her to Payson Park to train up to the first running of the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf in the near future. So she will probably be shipping down to Florida, I would imagine, in the next couple of weeks. Second place finisher Coretta is also being pointed for that uh, Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf event. Uh, Moss Flower has the option of going to both, uh, either the, uh, the fillies and mares on the turf or the distaff. Uh, Heritage of Gold, the fourth place finisher, also probably heading down to Florida as well. A little bit disappointing after setting the early fractions and uh, slowing down the pace fairly successfully. Shane Sellers had nothing left in the drive on Heritage of Gold. But uh, another filly that's shown great versatility could, uh, could be considered a, uh, a possibility for either filly or mare race on the Breeders' Cup card. Uh, it was stated after the race that, uh, that there was the possibility uh, that Tom Amos felt that she may have been just a little bit, uh, preferred just a little bit more firm going. The track was labeled as good at Belmont Park for the running of the Flower Bowl. Soaring softly, a uh, impressive winner here, continues to rack up the victories on the turf. She is a four-year-old chestnut daughter of Chris S. She was bred in Kentucky by uh, the Galbraith and Phillips racing operation. She is owned by Joan Phillips and John Phillips, trained by Jimmy Toner, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. 
completing the mile and a quarter on the turf course labeled good in 201 and two fifth seconds. Next, we do have a special event to bring to you from Longchamp in Paris. On uh, Sunday, we had the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. This is a grade one event uh, going a mile and a quarter, or a mile and a half, rather. The going was very heavy over in Paris for the running of this race. A number of horses did def decide to defect from this race uh, because of the conditions at, uh, at Longchamp. There had been heavy rains throughout the, uh, the week leading into the race. We do have this race for you as a special event. Let's go to Paris now for the running of the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. And they're off. El Condor Passa breaks sharply from that inside post. Genghis Khan also moves up. There's Tiger Hill between horses moving into third. Daryabe in perfect position fourth. The gray horse there, De Lamy, is fifth with Croco Rouge up on his outside. Manjou down along the inside getting a good trip thus far in the colors of Michael Tabor. In the early going, it's El Condor Passa in front, has it by about two lengths. Genghis Khan takes second. Close in there, Tiger Hill, third by a head over Daryaba. Greek Dance moves up fourth. Croco Rouge moves through between horses, fifth. There's the gray up on the outside, De Lamy in perfect position in sixth. Down along the rail, still Manjou is next, followed by Flamingo Road. Fantastic Light Borgia begins to move up from between horses. Into that sweeping turn, and El Condor Passa still in front, has been there from the start, has the lead now by about two and a half lengths. Genghis Khan is still second there in the blue colors. Tiger Hill up on the outside is third. Down along the rail, that's Greek Dance who runs fourth a length. Flamingo Road has moved up into fifth. Daryabe is sixth. Croco Rouge and De Lamy up on the outside and still down along the inside, Monju. Monju just in perfect position has never left the rail, but it's still El Condor Passa as they continue through that long turn. El Condor Passa is there now by two and a half lengths. Tiger Hill moves up on the outside now, moves by and takes second. Still down along the inside. That's Genghis Khan and Greek Dance. De Lamy up in the center of the track with Croco Rouge. And still right on the inside, Monju. The leader, El Condor Passa, Tiger Hill, up on the outside. There's the gray, De Lamy now moving up on the extreme outside. Also moving up, Croco Rouge, and down along the inside, Monju. They're still in that turn, nearing the final straight. El Condor Passa is in front. De Lamy now up on the outside. De Lamy not liking the soft point at all. Looks like Frankie de Torre just taking up on De Lamy. Now Monju moves off of the rail. Monju is gaining ground. It's El Condor Passo. Here comes Monju up on the outside. What a finish in the arc. Monju, El Condor Passa. It's Monju who gets up to win the arc in a driving finish over El Condor Passa. Manjou, the winner of this year's French and Irish Derby, three-year-old Manjou getting the win here, making a nice wide move, running down El Condor Passa, who uh, really had looked like he was going to blow the race open midway through the going. A very impressive run by uh, El Condor Passa as well. Finishing in the third spot was Croco Rouge. Uh, Croco Rouge last year uh, went into this race as a three-year-old, has been a little bit disappointing throughout his season this year, but getting a very nice third place finish here seemed to relish the, uh, the very heavy going over the long shop course. This, uh, the, the racetrack really just very, very soft. You saw the uh, clods of mud and dirt uh, flying up from the hooves of the horses. They just, uh, they really were having, a number of horses having a hard time getting through the going. One of those who had some trouble may well have been De Lamy, who was the favorite going in. De Lamy uh, was a highly talked about horse earlier on in the week as Godolphin went into this race with this horse in very, very good condition. Unfortunately, the mile and a half has not really been his best game. The, uh, the very heavy going also not been his best, uh, best surface. He seems to like the little bit more firm going, particularly when being asked to stretch out this far, came back in ninth position. Uh, Godolphin had actually said that they may scratch him uh, because of the, uh, the unpleasant racing conditions. They did decide to go with him and unfortunately coming back a disappointing ninth fin place finish here. 
Manjou continues to, uh, to do very well. This is his fourth consecutive stakes win. He is now seven for eight in his lifetime. Uh, good win here by Michael Canane, Irish rider, invading Longchamp and getting the win here. Uh, Manjou, a three-year-old cult, owned by Michael Tabor, trained by John Hammond completing the mile and a half of the very boggy going in two minutes, 38 and two fifths seconds. That does conclude our look back at this weekend stakes events. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you'll be here next weekend as we next week as we have a wrap up of the upcoming weekend's exciting preview racing at Belmont Park. We'll have a stakes packed weekend at Belmont. We're also going to be looking at the opening stakes weekend at Keeneland's fall meeting and very good stakes racing action to bring to you from around the, the country as well. We hope you will all be here for that next week. Thanks everyone for watching. I'm Jean Wood and I hope to see everyone back here for Horses and Courses next week.